Welcome to creating database users. There's two ways to create database users, within SQL Server Management Studio or in T-SQL using the create user statement. In either case, the end result is the same. A new user is created, that user is either a contained user or is mapped to a SQL Server login. There's a couple of different types of users. We can have mapped users, which are users created based on a SQL Server login. This can either be mapped to a Windows login or a SQL Server account. There's unmapped users, which are users which are created without mapping to a SQL Server login. These do not grant an external user access to the database, but instead are used internally for things such as signing code or using the execute as for things like dynamic SQL within a front end application. The third type of user is new in SQL Server 2012. This is a contained user. Contained users are users which have usernames and passwords, but do not have corresponding logins. They are contained within the database themselves. Contained users can have no instance level permissions as they do not know about the instance itself. All they know is about the database. Anything outside the database is beyond the scope of a contained user. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we create users within the SQL Server database. As you can see, we have here SQL Server Management Studio and we're connected to a SQL Server 2012 instance. Let's go ahead and create a couple of new users within the AdventureWorks database. To create users, we open up the database, then open up security, and then open up users. As you can see, there's a few users created here already. Let's create a new one. Right click on users and select new user. The first thing we're gonna do is create a new user mapped to a login. First, we need to select the login we wanna use. To do this, we simply click the browse button, then select the login we wanna create a user for. In this case, let's use the cat and mouse slash administrators login and create a user for it. We simply check the box, click OK. The login is now specified. We could have simply typed the login if we wished to. We can then click OK, and the login is specified. You can then copy and paste the login into the username field. By default, most people will create users with the same name as the login. This makes figuring out what users belong to what login much, much easier. We can specify a default schema for the user if we need to. If we don't, it'll simply use the DBO schema by default. We can specify what schemas are owned by the user. We can say what roles the user is a member of. We can grant permissions to the user directly, or we can set up any sort of extended properties that we need to to document the user. Let's go ahead and script this user out and see what the statement looks like that actually creates the user. The syntax is fairly straightforward. I'm just going to wrap it here so it's easier to read. The syntax is create user, the name of the user, for login, and then the name of the login that it maps to. Once we execute this script, or if we had clicked OK on the previous window, the user would be created. In this case, we get an error message because apparently this user already exists. Let's go ahead and close this window. Let's go ahead and create a user that's not assigned to a login. To do this, we go to the exact same screen, and we select SQL user without login. Here we simply specify a username, we'll call it test4. There's no password required, because there's no way to log in with this user. We simply click OK, and the user's been created. We can now grant whatever permissions we need to this user. Let's look at the same operation, but this time let's look at the T-SQL code. We'll call this one test5. To create a user in T-SQL without a login, simply specify create user, specify the username, and then specify without login. In order to create a contained user, we need to enable the contained user feature. We do this by right-clicking on the instance and going to properties. We then go to advanced, and we ensure that enable contained databases is set to true. It is in this case, so the instance is ready to host contained databases. We can then set our database to being a contained database. We do this by going to the Options page within the Properties of the database and changing the containment type to Partial and clicking OK. We can now navigate back down to Security and Users and create a new user. You can see we now have a new default user type selected. That's a SQL user with a password. We can specify the username. We'll use Test6 in this case. We can specify a password. 
password, password1. We can set a default language and a default schema. The reason we can set a default language here where we couldn't before is because the language is defined by login. Because there is no login, but this is a contained user, we need to specify things like the default language now. Let's go ahead and script this user out and see what the code looks like to actually create this user. I'll go ahead and wrap this to make it easier to read on the screen. As you can see, the syntax is simply create user, and the name of the user, with password equals the password we wish to use, default schema, and then the schema we wish to specify. Once we run this, we'll now have a contained user within our database that can log into the database without needing to have a login mapped. In summary, there's three different types of users, mapped, unmapped, and contained. Users allow the login within the instance to connect to and open the database. Contained users don't have logins, so they're not mapped to any specific login. 